All right, this video is in regards to a 2003 Jeep Grand Cherokee, which happens to be my Jeep. I gotta rebuild the engine on it, but I took the immobilizer out of it, right here. And I have the chip here, or the board. I desoldered this chip. I gotta clean up the board still. And I put it on this little, it is a FQFP64, so it's a 64 pin chip. I took off right here. You can see it's a Motorola chip all that information on there and I wanted to read it to get the pin and you know read some the pin the van all that stuff so because this one you cannot read via OBD with the IM508 anyways so I got the IM508 series the XP400 Pro and I'll show you how I hooked all these wires up initially we try to hook them up to the board on here or the chip on the board had some issues with it so we just use the breakup board it's a lot easier and again, like I said, I'll clean up all that solder, the solder sucker, some solder wick. So, first thing I went into is I went into Emo Mobilizer. I had some issues um, doing it this way, so I'll show you kind of how I found my way through it. So, like this one, we're not connected to the vehicle. It's a 9905 Jeep blade key, it's an 03. And what I did here, Once a control unit, you can read the immobilizer password through the OBD, but you have to have a program key, an unprogrammed cut key, and a cut key that's not even be able to be programmed, just a regular key. I don't have all that. So I went read immobilizer password, dis dismantle to read, but I got some incorrect information in here. It says, prepare to remove the read immobilizer password from the screen. Please turn off the ignition switch, disconnect the power supply, remove the, from the car. Basically what we did here, right? Connects the XP400 Pro, connect it. We did. So I go in here, it's none of these chips. Well, some of these mobiles had a 24 CO2 chip. This one does not, does not have that chip. It's none of these chips. And if you click on it, it'll show you directions how to hook it up. But ours is not this, we don't have a chip right there. Anyway, so I went, let's get out of this one. And then I went to Programmer, which I think the other one will actually take you there from the Immobilizer to Programmer. Just checking the upgrade file, I'm on the network hotspot here. So once this goes in, I went to Chip EEPROM, went to Chip Read and Write, I went to Immobilizer, I went to Jeep, it's a Grand Cherokee, EE Prom. And what we're not actually reading, we're not actually reading the EE Prom, we're reading the MCU, the microcontroller. But I went to Schematic Diagram, and then this one told us to set it up this way. But this chip is different than this one. Like if you look, this oscillator's to the side and this one is straight up. So it's not that one. So then I'm like, okay. So then what I'm trying to remember where I went next. Okay, I know where I went next. So then I talked to Autel on the phone. We went to right key via dump. And this one had the right schematic. So I went in here, but actually I'll show you what I did. We found it from this and then we went back to the uh, programmer part of it. I don't think all chips are like this. I think you just kind of got an odd one for this. I think they're class two type uh, programming for keys, I, I guess, I'm not sure. Just getting into this EEPROM stuff. So USA, Jeep, Grand Cherokee. This is the chip number. I have an 03. There's 99 to this. These are the two chips. Hang on. I just didn't want to go that far yet. This chip and this chip went all the way up to 05. From 99 to 04, basically. I know I don't have this one. This is the chip I have that ends in AZ32. So I went in here. 
And if you look, it tells you the AZ32. Nope, no information here. This is how you write a key operation guide. I went in here and I pulled up the picture and this is the one. And if you look, it oscillators to the side, right? Well, if you zoom in on this, all these numbers match all the numbers on here. Well, it's backwards, but you get the idea. So, so then what I went and did is I said, okay, I know the chip, so I exited out of here. I went back to the programmer. And I went in here. Checking the up. Every time you do this, it checks the upgrade file of the XP400. There's an XP200 it came with, but to do this, you have to have the XP400 Pro, is what I have actually. Not just the 400, it's the Pro, whatever that means. So chip EEPROM, chip read and write, and it's, in the, it's not really EEPROM, it's an MCU microcontroller. I went to MCU, it's a free scale, which even though it says Motorola, it's a free scale. This series, this exact chip, AZ32. So it says need 12 volt power, so I'm using a 12 volt power supply. I'm using that one for my 906 Bluetooth. Press sec to execute, find password or read password. So I hit okay. So there's the ROM and the ROM V, it doesn't read nothing. So I'm not gonna even go over those. It tries to. So go to EEPROM, schematic diagram. And we got a 64, so you hook up these wires, not this one, which is the 100, we're going to 64. So PTA 26, so one off 26 on here, to programmer TR, transmit and receive. I went from RST3, pin 3, to program reset. I went from 59 to OSC. I guess that's oscillator, I would imagine. I went from IRQ2, pin 2, to VPP1 for voltage. I went to VSS uh, 21, 56, 61, 63 to ground, all those pins to the grounds. And then 22, 55, 60 to VPP2. I made a jumper that went all in one for three powers going to VPP2, which I think was five volts. So I hooked that up, which I have it all hooked up now. And then I went to SEC. And then I'm like, okay, so I'm gonna read it. I say read password. So it'll read it here, but I'm gonna get all zeros, which is obviously not the password, which means basically there's no data. I'm like, okay. So I hit find password. And then I'm gonna get all Fs, which is no data. I'm like, okay. So I hit okay again, get out of this screen. There's a password list, which I'm not real familiar with what this is, chip, password. None of this stuff really matched up to anything. So then you can add a password, I guess. So I went escape and I just hit read from the EEPROM, even though it's an MCU. This is where it actually reads, the file, the hexadecimal file. So it's reading, it's communicating flashing green. There, there's our file, our chip data. Well, I notice, I know my pin 6771, which is right there on this line. The VIN I don't recognize in here. But anyway, so I hit save. I'm gonna save it this. It saves it, well, I already saved it. Let me, I saved it from earlier today. So let me just call this number two, hit save. It saved it right there. So I'm going to hit OK. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to escape out of this. And then what I did is I went to key, right key via dump. Hit OK. And then, hopefully my phone don't die. It's about to die here. Come on. Yeah, we got the XP400 Pro hooked up. USA, Jeep, Grand Cherokee. That's the chip we have. So I'm gonna hit load data. 
I'm going to pick this one because it's number two. It's the same thing. Hit OK. It's going to import that data. Data is ready. If you hit OK, well, there's your pin right there, 6771. So right now I have two keys program. I could add another key and make it. I'm like, OK, that's pretty cool. Let's escape out of that. And then go to the home screen, go to the hex editor. Open a file. Here's the one I did. They're both the same, but open this up in here. And then here's all your hexadecimal stuff. So you can go in here, for example, and you could, there's your pin, 6771. 67 is G, 71 is Q. I could change my pin. Here's my VIN rate here, 1J, 4GW, 48S, 23 Charlie, 58395. So I could change my VIN. So hypothetically, I'd have, there's a calculator I had up earlier. But I could go in here and change that 5 to, uh, well, I don't have my calculator hooked up, but let's make it a 43, no, a 32 should be a 2 from the calculator. So I made that a 2 instead of a 5. So now what I'm going to do, I just changed the VIN, and I could change the pin too. I could change the pin in here to just make this 67, which I would never want to do this like this, but GG, so 6767 instead of 6771, I'm going to save it, exit out of this, well, not that. Go back in here, go to Programmer. Got to check the file again. And then we go to EEPROM, chip read and write. MCU for microcontroller, Freescale, it's this series, it's this exact chip. Yep, already hooked it all up. EEPROM. We're going to write it now. So the one I changed was this one. I changed the pin and the end of the VIN. Hit this one, I'm going to OK. I'm going to write this new data to that chip. Right now it's right on that board. I'm changing the pin and the last digit of the VIN. Don't worry, I'm going to change it back, which I'll do that later on. I don't know if I'll show it on video, but I'm going to change it back. But I just wanted to see if I could do this with the EEPROM. I know I use a lot of this for a bunch of other cars. I already had the pin when I got it from the deal originally, but just another tool I can use if I ever need to one day. So it's writing it. Takes a little bit here. I'll, I'll pause it till it's done. Should be done soon. It usually goes from 5% to the very end here. Pretty shortly. There it is. Chip written successfully. So now I can read it again. Again, we changed the pin in the last digit of the VIN. Gonna write, read the data again, pretty quick like. There, there's our pin 6767. We have to go save this. Let's change this to, I don't know, let's just call it practice. Save it, escape out of here, go back to the hex editor, go back, go in and open that file. Open that file, the practice one. There's our pin 6767 instead of 6771. Our VIN ended in a 5 before. Now it ends in a 2. So I change it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to write all that stuff back to my original pin and VIN. So I just wanted to show you some of that stuff. Um, now there is a software program that they have for the computer. I'm going to take a look at that next for a laptop. All right, so now I'm going to take this chip. Got it still pinned out to the XP400, but I got it to my laptop. Still got my power supply hooked up. But I downloaded, there's AT Programmer, which is, I guess, Autel, and then there's the, just a regular programmer. 
which when I downloaded it was all in Chinese. But if you go to the AT programmer, the Autel one, and find this specific chip here, I'll show you. It doesn't read it correctly. Make sure the firmware is updated. It does that every time. Just making sure everything's correct. But I guess Autel copied the other website or other program software or something I would imagine so go in here I can search my chip but before I do that you go over here and you look at there's EEPROM MCU AMO all right so then if you go to find I know it ends in is it AT32 no AZ32 And there's, it was this one right here. Hit OK. And then it gives you the diagram, how to hook it up, all that stuff. But if I hit read, it fails. With this program. So chip read failed. And all you can do with the software is just do EEPROM stuff. So then I went to the programmer. I downloaded that, which, again, was all in Chinese. But still says Autel. Now, this is all from Autel.com on their download section by the PC Suite stuff. So once this one loads up. Gotta do that firmware thing again. It's just doing the firmware on the XP400. I don't know why it has to do it every time. So there it is. It's, firmware's updated. If you look over here, it's got a bunch of other options. And then it's got your VCC over here. If I go to find, type in AZ32, it's this one. Hit read, I don't think it reads right away. Or hit okay. Yeah, it says the current hardware version of the program is too low, please contact the dealers. So then I exit out of it. I go back in it. But it's not going to check for firmware this time, because it's a bit updated. Unless you go back to the other program, it'll check for firmware. But it works on the IM508 each, every time. So once this loads up again. So go to find AZ32. It's this one, hit OK. Hit OK. There's the chip in there. It tells you to 12, connect the 12 volt power supply. Same diagram. Did you hit read? This one will actually read now. See so you communicating. Said read successfully. Well, if you look in here, there's the pin 6771 for that address. There's the full VIN. Instead of the other one had it split in half, there's a full VIN. Well, you can go in here and you can edit these. Like you can delete this there and edit it and whatever you want and read it, save it, do all that stuff. Which I'm not going to do. The chip's written back to the way it was. So do I want to save it? No. So yeah, that's just using the IM508, some, this laptop. And the XP400 Pro to read a chip on a 2003 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo Mobilizer. So that's it for this video.